Welcome to this week's Transport Vlog. Now, this week we're going to be talking all about hydrogen. Last week, the European Commission published its long-awaited strategy on the fuel. And, in my opinion at least, it's in transport where you will be able to see the most visible impact of this stuff if it ever takes off. So here we go. Four things to look out for when it comes to hydrogen and transport. Number one, and not a very obvious one, trains. Electrification and railways go somewhat hand in hand, especially here in mainland Europe. But you can't electrify everything. There's bridges, there's tunnels, there's natural phenomena, there are costs to think about. And especially when you get things like branch and regional lines that don't actually serve that many people, investments have to be more prudent. And in this case, this is where hydrogen can come in. Germany has already started doing it in one service in the north, where it's basically more cost effective to buy a hydrogen train, refuel at the beginning of the day and run the service that way. You don't have to pull up the overhead lines, you don't have to maintain them. It's basically like running a normal diesel train, but all that comes out the back is water. So that's where trains can sort of come into this equation of, well, what do you do with this stuff? The, the hydrogen strategy, after all, is basically a resource management strategy. Uh, producing hydrogen, green hydrogen, from renewable energy is still going to be a very uh, costly process, and we're not going to be able to build capacity that quickly where we can just use it wherever we want. You have to make a case for it. So in this case, trains could be one of those options. The second thing on this list is aviation. Now, a EU study last month said that hydrogen has a real, real potential to decarbonize aviation. All it needs is aircraft redesigns and basically the will of aerospace companies and airlines to make those investments. The uh, French government gave uh, a lot of money to the aerospace sector last month uh, as part of a coronavirus uh, aid package, which means that they are going to expect to see a zero emission plane by the 2030s. Airbus said last week that it sees hydrogen as a real um, option, a viable option, one of the best technologies in order to sort of get carbon out of aviation. Um, and for things like regional, uh, short haul, medium haul, there's real scope there because um, it is possible. But long haul, that's where you have to really redesign the plane to have the real big fuel tanks and that's where it starts to become very expensive. So there's going to again be this resource management like thinking have to go on is that if we put all of our money into developing a medium range plane, that can then be rolled out and aerospace giants start building it en masse. That brings costs down because you have economies of scale. Again, so aviation's got a real sort of headache to think about. Um, the EU regulator, IASA, has already uh, licensed a electric plane for international use. Other companies are starting to think about fuel set technology, but there's nothing really out there yet. It's really at a fledgling stage. And it's the same for the other thing on the list, which is shipping, where Hydrogen has a massive potential in, in shipping because it has the power potential to actually move these thousand tons boats around the world and it can be squished into ammonia in order to um, take up less cargo space. Again, this is all about money. Everything on this list is about money. Um, but again, we don't, we don't have a demonstrator yet. We don't have a prototype. There are plans for it. There is different EU money floating around to put something out there. There's an electric battery uh, ferry operating in Denmark at the moment, there are electric boats around the world, but again, it just hasn't got the range or the capacity to do the job that we need, the real polluting stuff, the huge tankers and container ships that come from China, Australia, the US on a regular basis, that there's a big emission problem there. So again, it's, it's, there's, nothing really to, there's nothing really tangible at the moment to sort of um, point to. There's no, there's no hydrogen ship, there's no hydrogen plane, there are hydrogen trains, as I said. And that comes to the last thing on our list, the most ubiquitous thing out there, the passenger car. And again, I'll get back to my point. This is a resource management strategy. Do you need to put hydrogen, which is still a precious commodity, into passenger cars? When all you have to do is look out on the street and you'll probably see a Tesla or a Nissan Leaf or a Prius or something like this. This technology already exists, right? Powering cars with electric power. Fuel set technology has been around for a long time. I remember watching a motoring TV show when I was but a little boy and it had this magic car that just produced water at the back of it. But it's still not out there. It's still too expensive to make these things. There's still this block somewhere. So if we do take this at face value that the rollout of hydrogen, green hydrogen on scale, is all about managing resources. Passenger cars just aren't the right fit. Trucks and buses and this kind of thing are because hydrogen is better suited in some cases to power in these large vehicles. So that's the thing to look out for here, is that if we are going to be pursuing this uh, strategy of producing green hydrogen as quickly as possible for as low a cost as possible, putting it into things like passenger cars is at the moment probably a bad bet. 
and putting it into things that don't exist yet, like hydrogen planes and shipping, is also problematic. So something's got to give. Someone's got to build something, as always. You've just got to show people how it works. Otherwise, we'll get into a situation like with carbon capture storage, where it's this amazing technology, but nobody really does it. You can't put, I can't write a story about it and say, this thing is going to change the world. This is going to solve all of our problems. No more energy crisis, no more climate breakdown. So bear that in mind. Uh, thanks for tuning in again. Uh, I'll endeavor to keep bringing you these vlogs because I've heard all of your lovely feedback about them. And um, well, get in contact if there's something you think I should be talking about. Uh, I'm on uh, Twitter. You, there's my email on there as well. And thanks for tuning in. And subscribe and share with your friends and everything. Ciao for now.